Thomas for healing, complete healing. For Scott Conan. Scott Conan. Conan or not Conan? Conan. All right. And also for Brenda, that's his wife. For healing for him. Let's uh, let's let's go to God praising and and uh, clearing the ground so that our prayers will be answered. The Bible says we ought to go in uh, asking for Him to first forgive us and then to hear our prayer and to do and if we're not and we ought to believe that God is going to hear us and answer our prayer. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. 
God, glory to God, glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. situation like that happened uh, with the gentleman who was in the hospital. He had a, um, a heart attack, I think. Something with his heart. And, and I found out about it. And I went to the hospital to pray for him. But there were a lot of people from work in the room. And uh, I was waiting for them to leave. Waiting and waiting and waiting. And then finally God said, are you ashamed of me? Mm. You know, why won't you pray for him now? I went over and prayed for him, you know, that way. Yes. Put one of his spiritual prayers on him. Uh, <laughs> give him a new heart. Yes. yes. I know you will, Jesus. The next morning, he called me up, him and his wife called me up from the hospital. He said, the doctor said, if I wouldn't have took this x-ray myself, I would think that this is a different heart. Oh, you know, but it's a different heart. It looks like a whole different heart. Jesus. You know, praise the Lord. So I always remember that when I think about being ashamed <laughs> of speaking something of God in front of people. You know, so bless the name of the Lord. Anybody else? Testimony. No one else? Well, praise God. We'll get started. I, I want to, I have a, a message tonight that I call, Are You Ready? Are You Ready? And um, that's a question that probably comes up in, in people's mind. You know, probably nobody ever asked you, Are You Ready? You know, maybe periodically somebody might ask, you know, are you ready? If God came today, or if you got your ticket got punched today, would you be ready? Are you ready to meet the Lord? And um, uh, there's, a, there's a, a group of scriptures in the Bible where Paul discusses this 
and he basically says that he's ready. He's ready. So the question comes to us, if you're, if you're a born-again believer, if you're a Christian, you've been living a Christian life, you've been saved for so long, then are you ready? Would you consider yourself ready? I want to begin in 2 Timothy 4, verses 7 and 8. He said, I have fought a good fight. I finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day. And not only, and not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. Praise the Lord. So, so, so Paul, he declares that, no, I'm ready. And it's not just me, but there's others also that are ready. So the question comes to us, are you ready? Are you ready? Praise God. First uh, Timothy 6 and 12, he said, he says, he says, fight the good fight, lay hold on, it, on eternal life, whereunto thou art also called. And has uh, professed a good profession before many witnesses. So, so you you have to think about uh, uh, the fact he tells Timothy, he said, "Look, you you need to fight a good fight. I fought one. So fight a good fight, and you're called unto eternal life. And you could have a good profession. Praise the Lord. But but that 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 question that question keeps looming. You know, are you ready? Paul writes and says that he is ready to go. Are you ready? He says his departure is near and he has uh, finished his course. Finishing your course means you completed all the things that you were to complete. You fulfilled your purpose in God. That, that's what you finished your course. Uh, uh, in Acts 13.25, the Bible says the same thing of John the Baptist. It says, and as John fulfilled his course, he said, who, th- who whom think ye that I am? I am not he, but behold, there cometh one after me whose shoes uh, uh, of his feet I am not worthy to loose. So, so they're talking about John the Baptist. Say when he fulfilled his course, he he obviously did what was ready, what was needed for him to do. Uh, uh, um, and and this uh, fulfilling your course is also is is referred to as a race. If you look at First John nine twenty four through twenty five, it says, Know ye not that uh, they which run in a race run all, but uh, one receiveth the prize. So run that you may obtain. And every man that striveth for the mastery is tempered in all things. Uh, now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible crown. So I, I like this. He gives us an example about this. Now remember, now he's talking about getting ready because Paul says, no, I'm ready. I, I've run a good race. I've fought the Good fight, I finished my course, I kept the faith. So there's laid up for me a crown of righteousness. So the question to us is, are you ready? And 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 we're talking about fulfilling our course or running our course the way Paul did. You know, if that, that's what has to happen. If, if this is the qualifications for being ready, then I wanna I wanna run my course. I wanna finish my course. I wanna make sure that I do everything that I'm supposed to do. And and I like this passage of scripture nine. In 1 Corinthians 9, because as he compares it to a race, he gives you some good ideas of what, what, what that would be like. What would that mean uh, if you, to finish your course or, or to, to, uh, if, it's, if it's like a race? Then explain it to me a little deeper. And he says this. He says that those that are striving for a mastery, uh, uh, they are temperate in all things. That means that they exercise self-restraint, that they exercise self-restraint in diet and chastity. If you look that up, that's what it'll tell you. Uh, 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 if I'm training for a race and I want to master the race, then I'll make sure that I eat only the things that will aid me in being fast. That's what he's talking about, being temperate. Probably no desserts. Uh, <laughs> no eating late at night. You know, I have to restrain and abstain from some other pleasures that will sip my energy and prevent me from running as fast as I could, or being the best in my race. So, so when he tells you this, when he says, look, this, this is like you run a race, uh, uh, um, and, and you should run this race like you want to win. You know, I, I'm sure you remember the testimony when, when uh, Camille and a good friend of ours, uh, Mike and Lillian, Lillian, she and Lillian, they would go out and run these races. I don't know how long the race was, but they were running the race, 
and Lillian was coming in last, and Camille was, you know, she was getting it. She was trying to make it. She wasn't going to be first, but she wasn't going to be last. And, and, and uh, Lillian cried out to her, Camille, Camille. Camille said, what? Come here, girl. So Camille go back there to see if something wrong with her, like she was hurt or something. And she wasn't hurt. She just wanted somebody to run last with her. She did. She just wanted Camille to be with her. But see, the problem with that is, well, Lillian, you, not, you have no attempt to win the race. You're not trying to obtain anything. You're just there. You're just in the race. See, a lot of Christians are like that. See, you, you're just in the race. That's why Paul says, so run that you may obtain. You know, there's a lot of people in the race, but only one person receives the prize, so you have to run like you're trying to be that person. That, that's what he's telling us. And then he said, if you're really striving for the mastery, then you're going to be temperate in all things. If you really want to win, then you're going to have a temperate life. He's comparing it to food and that sort of thing. So So he's he's giving giving you an example example of the kind of life he lived. This is why I'm ready. Because Because I lived my life as though I was running a race and I was trying to obtain. I realized there's only one person I'm trying to obtain. So I'm striving to master this thing. I'm striving to be the best at it. So I'm living a temperate lifestyle. There's some things that I have abstained from. There's some things that I restrained myself from. See? Uh, uh, he didn't go out and party uh, uh, with the fellas, though he may have wanted to. He, he didn't get drunk with his friends, though it may have seemed like a good time. If I just hang around and drink wine and do this and hang, hang out and stuff like that, uh, you know, yeah, yeah, I get it. You know, yeah, God wants you all to be saved and all this kind of stuff. He stopped me on the road to Damascus, but, you know, I'm, I'm okay. No, he, 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 he abstained from some things. There's some things that I didn't do that seemed like they were good things. They look like they're having fun, but I'm not doing that. I'm trying to win the race, so I'm being temperate. I'm living a temperate lifestyle. In other words, he was that, and he exercised self-restraint in his life. A lot of saints, you don't want, you don't want to exercise self-restraint. You want to eat anything, drink anything, do anything that your flesh tells you to do. All the time, you, you know, that's why the question is, are you ready? If God came back today, if God called your punch, your ticket tonight, would you be ready? Would you be ready? See, but I, I like this because Paul gives us a, 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 almost a schematic, how you can follow. If you could do what I did, see, I'm telling you right now, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I kept the faith, and there's laid up for me a crown of righteousness. And I'm telling you to fight the, fight a good fight, hold on to eternal life, because you're called to that. That's what God called you. So I invited you to be have eternal life with me. Now, are you ready? That's the question. Praise the Lord. Are you ready? Because uh, you know sometimes we 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 we're just in this race, but we're not running to win. We're not willing to be tempted. I, I, don't want, I don't have to be the best. Well, you should run like you're trying to obtain. <laughs> I'm not just out here so I can say I was in the race. I'm running to obtain the prize. That means I have to temper my lifestyle. And, you know, I, I know how to party. Back, you know, when I was. I, when I, once I was on my own and living, I had the party house. I was the, the place where people came if they wanted to party. You know, you know. I had uh, you. Some of you all don't remember this, uh, but but they had a, a sound system that came out. You had you know first you had the mono systems, just one speaker, you just hear minimum sound. And then they came out with stereo. If you had perfect stereo, you'd have something coming out of one speaker and something else coming out of the other that blend. And then they came out with a system called quadraphonic, where, where you had four speakers. And I had a, a, a quadraphonic system in my house. I had a quadraphonic eight-track tape player. You know what that is. And uh, the, the tape player in my car, you could 
it was like you were in the studio. I could take the lead singer out and just hear the, um, hear the background, you know. Some of y'all remember the Isley Brothers, Who's That Lady? Yeah, I could spread out, Who's That Lady? Who's That Lady? That's all you heard. And I could put them speakers back in. I just fascinate chicks with that, you know, get them in the car, you know. Come on. Watch this, baby, you know. Right. Work the speakers on her, you know what I mean. But, but, but I had a, a quadraphonic system in my house, in my apartment, so people want to know, oh, yeah. You got that good stereo system, you got that good this, you got that good everything. I realized that God did that in my life because of his purpose for me. Because as kids growing up, we had the basketball going in the backyard, we had the ping pong table in the carport, we had everything, we had extra gloves and balls if people didn't have that, you know what I mean? Like we were always the people that had that. It's funny, my brother and I turned out to be pastors, you know. But, but, but that was how, how it was. So everybody always came to my house to party. How to do that? I know how to do that. And and uh, uh, sometimes if I just let myself wander back into memories, oh man, it was something else, man. We used to be there, and we did this, and we did that, and we did that. But but now I live a temperate lifestyle. Now there's no party. We can come to your house, but no, you can't. You can't come to my house. <laughs> no. <laughs> you go to somebody else's house and tell me about it, but not my house. Praise the Lord. See, there's things that, 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 that are interest, of interest to me or that would have been of interest to me. You understand that, no, I, I'd love to do that. That's what I want to do. But in order for me to do this, I mean, it goes down to just the very details of your life. And like, like I was sharing with you all one time before, and, and, and I just did it again. I just had this kind of interest again, or really not an interest. I just looked into it. I'm, I'm assuming God was preparing for this particular message. But, but at one time, Camille and I were going to buy a condominium in Kansas City. We're always going to Kansas City. Let's just get a condo there. We don't have to get no hotels and all that kind of stuff. Girl, we could afford it. Come on, let's do it. You know? And the more I thought about it, and then God told me, well, yeah, you could do that. But if you get a condominium in Kansas City, you're going to be going to Kansas City when you wouldn't have gone because you got to use the property now because you bought it. What if I have something for you to do in Omaha? I, I told you all this too. I have a, I have a, a a picture that I'm I'm trying to finish. I might one day. But I think about it. I bought stuff for it. Everything. God said, Yeah, you could do that. But when you do it, you're gonna be proud of yourself. Really? Yeah. I wonder why I can't finish things. Cause you're gonna be proud. When you get over it, when you when when it's no longer me. Wow, look at what I did and it's just filling a spot on the wall, then maybe you could finish it. But right now, you're not ready. I've been a pastor for 28 years. Uh huh. You've been living longer than that. You've been in that flesh longer than 28 years. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Now I'm living a temperate lifestyle. There's things I want to do that I feel like I want to do. Oh, I would just love to do this, but I have to temper my life to, to, to where I can make me run faster in my race. I can't just go do anything that I want to do. I'm an athlete in the Christian kingdom. I'm an athlete in the kingdom of God. I'm trying to get somewhere. I'm trying to get the prize. I don't want to just be on the team. You know how that is. I was on the, I was on the varsity football team. What, what position you play? Oh, they had me. Sometime I played this. Sometime I played that. Sometime. How many games you played in? I played in one. Well, you're not really... <laughs> You're not really going to get a trophy of any course, kind. You're not really a player that's striving to win, to obtain anything. So, but, but Paul, he, he, he gives you the, the, the deal on how he got to the state where he was ready, where he could stand and tell you, no, I fought a good fight. I, 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 I finished my course. I kept the faith. Because these are things that I did in my life. This is what I did. This is how I came about this. Praise the Lord. Acts 20 and 24 says, But none of these things move me, neither count I my life dear unto myself, so that I might finish my course with joy and the ministry which I have received uh, of the Lord Jesus to testify the gospel of the grace of God. Paul, Paul talking about this in Acts 20, 
where it, there's things that, that you might normally be afraid of, that, that things, oh, they're going to do this, you know, if you go there. You know, they had two, two prophetess. They told him, hey, you, this is going to happen. If you go there, I see you being bound like this. They're going to do this to you. Okay, I don't care about that. None of that moves me. I have to finish my course. I'm not, I, you know, I understand. Boy, that's going to be dangerous if you go do that. You go tell them people that you can't work on Sundays, they might reduce your pay. They might tell you you have to look for another job. Okay, well, I understand that, but I have to serve God. He said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all this other stuff will be added to me. You, if you quit your job and start doing that, you're not going to have no insurance plan. You're not going to have no, well, gosh, that seems a little bit uh, uh, like it's a little bit crazy to the world, but, but there's some things I have to do. I have to finish my course. You know, I, you know, God will fix it. Don't worry, it will come about. Praise the Lord. I want to say also that I kept the faith. I, 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 want to, I continue to believe, and my life indicated that I believe. But are you ready? What, what do you say? What do you say? Oh God, okay, Lord, just give me a little more time. I, I'll, I'll get it together. <laughs> you know, you 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 be like Hezekiah. You know, he was praying. Oh God, I want an extension. You know, God blessed and extended his life. Are you ready? Are you ready? Uh, Paul also said that he's looking forward to a crown of righteousness. I'm looking forward to this crown of righteousness that, that's going to indicate that I, I did. I lived the life that I was supposed to live. I did the things I was supposed to do. God's going to give me a crown of righteousness. Uh, Colossians 1, 3 through 5 said, We give thanks to God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, praying always for you since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and of the love which you have for all the saints. For the whole which is laid up for you in heaven, whereof uh, you heard before the word of the truth of the gospel. Praise the Lord. So, so he, he's talking about this. When Paul said, no, I, I, have, a, I have a crown uh, that's laid up for me. God, God hence that there's laid up for me a crown of righteousness. Well, the Bible said also there's a hope laid up for me. There's a hope. There's an expectation. You expect some, there's something laid up for you. And he's talking about this. Uh, uh, I, I want the same thing in my life. I want to be able to receive a crown of righteousness. I want to be able to say that, no, I'm, 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 I'm going to get a crown. This, this is what I've done this. I've done that. I want to be ready. And, and, and Paul writes to the church at Colossus. He says, we thank God for you uh, uh, because we heard about your faith and the love that you have. And we also thank God for the hope that's laid up for you in heaven. Hope that's laid up for you in heaven. I want you to say that about me. Say that about me. I want, I want to be one of those people that can say, no, there's hope laid up for me. There's things laid up for me in heaven. God has laid some things up for me. Praise the Lord. He was waiting for me to get there. You know how it is. When somebody lays up something for you, they got something stored away or saved for you, then you're looking forward to that. Oh, I just can't wait. Like some people right now, you can't wait till you get home because you you, you got something you've saved up in your library, or you videotaping or whatever. I'm going to watch that, I tell you. I had to show up at church, but I, when I get home, I'm going to watch this. You know. <laughs> Some of you got a meal laid up. Ooh, I just can't wait. I, got, I, I have something laid up. I have some peach cobbler. Like Christina, Christina made some peach cobbler today. She, you know, I wouldn't eat it right away. I said, I'm going to save it, you know. It was telling me how, no, we got this ice cream to go. No, no, no. I got fat for yogurt. I'm living a little temperate now. I'm kind of winning the race. I'm not eating no ice cream. I'm not eating no ice cream. Okay. But I got some fat-free vanilla yogurt that will go perfect with this. Praise the Lord. It's laid up for me. See how excited we can get over stuff that's laid up for us in the natural. But think about something that God is. He has something laid up for you. I'm waiting for you to get here to give you something even greater than the blessings that you were flipping about on earth.
1 Timothy 6, 18 and 19 says this, uh, uh, that, that they, they do, do good, good that, that they be rich, rich in good works, works ready to, to distribute, distribute, willing to communicate, laying up in store for themselves a good foundation against the time to come, that they may lay hold on eternal life. And God telling you right now, you could lay up some things for yourself. The life you live, you could lay up in store for yourself a good foundation. For the time to come. It's not for now. It's laid up for you. I have a good foundation. I know I can step. When I step into heaven, I'm going to be standing on something that's not going to slip from under me. When I stand before God, I want to be standing on a foundation that's not going to crumble under my feet. But you laid up this for yourself. You, it was something laid up. Didn't Paul, no, I have a crown laid up for me. Crown of righteousness. No, we like things laid up for us. You know, anything that you lay up for is something that you're looking forward to having, something that's desirable. Praise the Lord. First uh, Peter 5 and 4 says, uh, and, and when the chief shepherd shall appear, you shall receive a crown glory that fadeth not away. That, yes, Lord, I want that crown. I want that crown. See, all these are things that you're looking forward to, but, but before you can look forward to these things, before you can say, oh yeah, you have to say, am I ready? Am I ready? Can I really say, as Paul said, no, I, I fought a good fight. I, I kept the faith. I finished my course. I did all the things that God would have me to do. This is a self-evaluation thing. Because only you would know this. You and God. See, only you would know this. And some people, you know, they, they want to be busy doing something, doing something, doing something. No, no. You want to finish your course. You want to do something that has to do with what, what God is having you to do. You, you want to finish. There's a course for you. That's what you want to do. You want to finish your course. You want to fulfill your purpose. I gave an example of this one time. Years and years ago, I couldn't think of the name of the show, uh, but somebody thought of it for me. But the show was Heart to Heart, and uh, Robert Wagner, and I forget the woman's name who was in it, but they were wealthy people, and he was like a detective or something, just a nosy person solving crimes, whatever. I don't know that he ever worked for a detective or whatever, but he was going about doing this. But they were wealthy, and they had a butler. Somebody would answer the door. They had a cook, and they had somebody who kept shining up their Rolls Royce and stuff like that. You understand. They probably had somebody clean the house also. You didn't see them in the show, though. But, but the example that I use is this. It's an idea in, in the kingdom of God. Oftentimes, you are, you are the mechanic, but you out there uh, clipping the bushes. You're not the gardener. But it looks like what the gardener is doing looks like it's good. Ooh, that looks like something I would like to do. But you're a mechanic. You're supposed to be over there working on the cars. If you go clip the bushes and then the gardener is clipping the bushes, what's going to happen with the car? And if the butler is doing this when, or the cook, you should be cooking or preparing the meals. When we get ready to eat, it's time for us to eat, but you out there polishing the car. We, you're not the one that polishes the car. The mechanic does that. You're supposed to be cooking. So the issue is that oftentimes we have a course that God has set us on, but you want to do somebody else's thing. If you could get away with it, you would. I'm sure that that's why I'm tone deaf. Because if I could get away with it, if I just had a backup voice, backup singer's voice, I threaten Derek almost every Sunday. I'm going to sing that song. He just laugh at me like he's doing now, you know. Because he knows I know you don't want to hurt, you don't want to offend people. You don't mind having a little fun, but you know. This is not going to be funny. After the second note, <laughs> laughter will be over. You know what I mean? But, but, but you know what I'm saying. You, you have a course that God has set you on. If you want to finish your course, if you want to be able to say, no, God, I, I fought a good fight. I kept the faith. I'm, I'm looking for what you have laid up for me. Where's my crown? Where's my foundation? Are you ready? Well, you, you're going to have to live a tempered life. You're going to have to finish your course, not someone else's. 
praise the Lord. And if you want the chief shepherd to give you the crown, one that fadeth not away, what were you going to have? You know, you had to be ready. You have to do the things, you know, that's laid out for us. I, you know, I, I, I once preached a message years and years and years ago about uh, uh, like living our lives is like an open book test. You know, it's like an open book test because, you know, an open book test, well, you could, you, you have a test, but you have the book. You can flip through the book and find the answer. That's how it is with, with our lives in Christ. You have, you, you have an open book test. And here, here's, if you, if the question was, how do you get ready? Then right here, turn to page so and so. You could flip through. I can go to 2 Timothy 4, 7, and 8. I can go to 1 Timothy 6, 12, Acts 13, 25, 1 Corinthians 9, 24 through 25, Acts 20 and 24. I can go through all this and say, oh, here's the answer. It's right here. It's right here in the book. I don't have to guess. I don't have to memorize it anything. It's an open book test. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> I want to also look forward to a crown of righteousness. I want hope laid up for me. I want a good foundation laid in store for me. What do you say? What do you want? He, he also says, look, he fought a good fight. I, I can't help but think that his fight was against the enemy and even his own flesh and its lust. A good fight. So who are you fighting with? Were you a boxer? No. Was there somebody physically attacking you? No. I fought a good fight. When he said I fought a good fight, he meant in this battle, in this struggle, in his life, in this spiritual warfare that he was fighting, he fought a good fight. And that fight was against the enemy and his own flesh and its lust. The fight is a fight of faith. That's what he said, the fight of faith, good fight of faith. It is a fight of faith because you know the devil is after your faith. That, that's what he's after. He's after your faith. He's trying to steal your faith and then turn your faithfulness. He does not care if you go to church. Go to church. You don't, you don't like football? Go ahead to church. I'm okay. You want to impress people that you, you want to be godly? Go to church if that's what you want to do. He does not care if you pray. You want to talk to God instead of me? You ain't got to talk to me. Go ahead. Talk to God if you want to. He doesn't care if you teach your Bible study or preach messages. He doesn't. As long as you don't live according to your preaching. As long as you don't believe the prayers you pray will be answered. Because without that, it's impossible to please God. I'm after your faith. I keep stirring up things to get you frightened, to make you afraid. Uh, look, all, all you, look, if you want to find out, you, you head hurt? Google it. Google it. I have you trembling every five minutes. I read, I saw online that uh, something, something, something. Okay, so what? So what? I saw in our book, that doesn't matter. See, see, <clears throat> what, what he's trying to do is frighten you. You, you know this. When, when, when Elijah was, uh, 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 ran and went away, he thought that Jezebel said they were going to kill him and all that kind of stuff. She sent somebody to him. To say, by tomorrow, this time, I'm going to kill you and all this kind of stuff. Well, that was a scare tactic. You could have sent the killer. Why are you sending a messenger? I'm just after your faith. I don't care what you believe. I don't care what you think, what you say, what you do. And all that stuff. I'm after your true faith, your belief. Because that's what's going to determine how you live. And if you don't have faith, you can't please God. So, so that's what I'm after. 
So when you fight in your fight, when you remember when you get into your fight, you have to remember what you're fighting for. If you say I fought a good fight, that means I trusted and believed God. I didn't give up. I didn't turn it in. I didn't say, oh, I don't care. I'm just going to do this and see what happens. No, no, no. I have faith. I trust. I believe. To the end. And some people have faith for a little bit. You know, the institution of faith is not a part of your life. You, you, you just believe certain things until it gets to something that's more difficult to believe. When, when it gets to something that's more difficult to believe, then well, you lost it. But see, you, you can't say you fought a good fight. You know, some people say that, say, well, well, you know, if you fight a good fight, you might lose the fight, but you know you did put up a good fight. That's not what I'm not. I'm not. No, I fought a good fight, meaning I won. I won. I lose. You know, they used to tell you that you know, like you get in a fight. This boy, he keeps picking on you. He keeps hitting you. Say yeah. He said, man, look how he beat you up. Yeah, but you should see him. We don't lose. And, and he says, no, I fought a good fight. And, and no, I realized that this fight was not just some physical thing, but it was against his own flesh. You know, a lot of times people tell me that. People tell me, I had somebody just recently tell me that, say, I'm leaving town. Text me, I'm leaving town, okay? All of them. A well, while later, they called me and said, hey, how come you ain't been in touch with me? I thought you were leaving town. And it turns out they are in town. They left. See, the problem with leaving town when things are not going right, I just can't get, I got to go out of town, is you still going to be with you when you get where you're going. The issue is not the town. Trust me, your battle is not with Omaha. Your battle is with you. I fought a good fight. I fought a good fight. Yeah, and you know, the devil doesn't care just as long as you don't believe that stuff. So you can go to many churches, pray, have as many Bible says as you want. Just walk away no dull like you were when you went in and you're okay. Uh, Philippians chapter 3. Beginning in verse 13, it said, Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things uh, which are before. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. It, it, this, this is what you do. This is what you do now. Uh oh, I caught myself in a situation where I'm not ready. I, I don't know what I don't know what's going on. I, you know, I could say that. I could recite that scripture. I could memorize that scripture. Uh, uh, what Paul said. You know, like uh, if I was in a Sunday school class and the, the teacher said, "Hey." We're going to memorize 2 Timothy 4, 7, and 8. And I could tell you, I fought a good fight. I finished my course. I kept my faith. Henceforth, there's laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me in that day. And not me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. Wouldn't that be beautiful? Yeah, the children lay up. Okay, Johnny, you say your verse. I fought my good fight. I finished my faith. I did this, I did that. But did you really do that? See, I could, I could say that, but for me to actually say that and mean it, and for me to understand that to be true, then I'm going to have to do some things. If I'm caught like this, then I'm going to have to forget all those things which are behind me. I'm going to have to be reaching forth unto those things that are before. I'm pressing. I'm pressing. You know how it is. You press for something. You know, like if you want something, you want to get something, but you really don't have enough money for it, but you press. And you don't pay something that you should pay. Buy something that you don't need. That's pressing. You're making sure it happens. I, I, I'm pressing 
I'm pressing toward the mark of the prize of the high calling of God. Oh, I have to get there. So you start pressing, you start, some things drop off. I know I would like to go here, I would like to do that, I would like to do that, but I, I'm, my eye is on this. I'm, I'm pressing toward this. Come on, man, we could have, no, I, I, I would love to, brother, but I, I got to press. Man, you saw so and so in the mad church and they would like this, they would like, yeah, you know what, I would like to talk about it, but I, I'm pressing. You know what they said, you hear what they're doing, uh, you know what, I, that's, I'm sorry, I don't have time to discuss that, I'm pressing. I'm trying to get toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. It's a high call. And God called you to something great. God I, I, took you out of the world, brought you into his fold, into his kingdom, nurtured you, cares for you, does everything for you. He's doing things for you right now that you don't know about. You may find out next year. Oh, wow. God must have done. Yeah, he did that. He's been doing things for you all the while. I told you that before, you know. Stuff you're shouting about, you just found out. God's been doing that. He did that a long time ago. Took care of it, secured it, placed it there for you. So that when you came up to it, when the time was right, you would get it. But you didn't know that. He's been doing all sorts of things. He's brought you in and made you a part of a kingdom where, 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 where you, you just blessed. I, I told you about the favor and stuff this morning. We were talking about the favor, how Camille was upset because I had favor. You know, woman came, took the thing out of my hand and marked it down. I called up at work, girl. Thank you, right. She told me one time, because I told her I didn't want no skinny wife. She told me, don't you pray, because God's going to listen to you. I've been on 19 diets and can't lose a pound. <laughs> don't you, <laughs> let it go. You know, don't pray about me. You know. <laughs> but God brought you into something that you can't explain. He brought you into this. And I, I, I tell you, I, I, I want to say, you know, also, I kept the faith. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. And there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness. I want to say I continue to believe, and my life indicated that I believe. What will you say? Father, right now, in your precious name, we thank you for your word. We thank you for teaching us, Lord, for reaching us, for giving us just a, just a, a glimpse, O oh God, of the things that we can do, the things that you're doing with us and in us and for us. God, how you desire so much this fellowship and this love relationship between us and you. God, it's even greater than we know. It's even greater than we know. We keep getting sidetracked. With, with, with carnal feelings and emotions. But Lord, you're the one. You're who we should be after. We should be pressing towards you, Lord. We should be preparing ourselves so that we'll be ready to say one day, no, I fought a good fight. I finished my course. I kept the faith. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you. We have examples of human beings just like us who, who, who literally fulfilled their course. Lord, we, we can do the same. You're teaching us. You're reaching us. You're helping us. You're telling us how. God, today, we, we, we want to enter the race. We're in the race. We're, we're, we're preparing, oh God, for this race that you have us in. Lord, we've decided that we not just want to be in the race, but we want to run like we're trying to obtain something. That, that's going to call for us to, to live a temperate life, oh God. We might have to exercise some restraint in certain areas, God. But that's okay because we're pressing for the mark of the high calling. Lord, 
We come against everything and anything, O oh God, that would hinder our growth in you. No, I, I, I want to be ready. I want to be able to say, no, I, I fought the good fight. I, I, kept, I, kept, I kept the course. I kept the faith. I finished my course. I did all things, O oh God, according to your will and your purpose. We praise you. We thank you. We bless your wonderful name. In the precious name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen.